Nathan Lane, you've just been nominated for your seventh Primetime Emmy Award for Only Murders in the Building. And you also now have the most comedy guest actor nominations at six. So what does any of that mean to you? It means I'm old, Joyce. That's what it means. It means I've gotten very old, older than I ever wanted to be. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a lovely thing. I, I mean, it sounds impressive until you realize I haven't actually won. But it's nice to be uh, invited to the party and part of the conversation, for sure. And, uh, you know, it has it has a lot to do with the quality of, of the show, of Only Murders in the Building. Mm -hmm. So, Well, I, I feel like this year could be lucky number seven. You do? do? You I think okay. so. You don't feel that way? <laughs> I, you know, I'm, <laughs> what a, one of the advantages of getting old is, you know, it's not, it, it's, it, um, uh, it, look, if, if it happened, it would be a lovely thing. Uh, uh, and, and if not, it's, it's just, I'm happy that I'm, I'm still, people are still interested in hiring me and 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 i uh, just try to do good work and um so it's it look it would be great it'd be lovely uh, after all this time um uh, as i you know i i, I do have two daytime emmys uh -huh. but as you know they're filled with chocolate and not taken quite as seriously <laughs> so it would be nice to finally win the big boy nighttime emmy uh and uh, yes, it would be, um, and it would be very uh, meaningful because of uh, this particular show and and working with these people and and uh, this uh, extraordinary young actor James Caverly, you know, who was who was just amazing and and uh, so I'm yeah, it, it would it would be very nice. It would mm -hmm. be a nice thing. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> And as we learned uh, from last year's Emmy ceremony, from their their sketch, the daytime Emmys are only spelled with one M too. So that's is that right? Yeah, that was their sketch. Did it last year? <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, you 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 would deserve it for sure for only murders. A, an amazing performance. I love the show so much in your performance. And I, I know you know you know Steve Martin and Martin Short. Uh, you guys go way back. So when they came to you with this part of Teddy Demas, what did they tell you about it? Because at first, nothing. it seems like the benefactor of their podcast. They, they told me nothing. It was <laughs> literally, do you want to do this show? And I said, yes, it's a no brainer. It's Steve and Marty. And uh, I love Selena Gomez. And, you know, she's really kind of been the revelation of the show and that she she's so adorable and funny and, and holds her own with Steve and Marty. Um, yeah, I just sounded I had I had heard about the show that they were doing it. And, and then, uh, so I just thought, oh, well, this will be a blast. It'll just, we'll just be l having fun, which we did. But then as, as time went on, it, it was revealed that this, this character was much darker than anticipated and, and um, that I would have to learn uh, American Sign Language for certain scenes with my, my son who was deaf. And um, so it was much more complicated and and a, and a, a, a thrilling challenge. Um, and uh, yeah, look, it's uh, it's always fun to be uh, on a soundstage with Martin Short and Steve Martin. I mean, they're you know they're as good as it gets, and you know, and they're at a wonderful point in their lives where you know they have nothing to prove. It's just about doing good work and having a good time and that and they they really set the tone for this show and and uh and they're extremely gracious and and fun and and appreciative of all of the i mean there's, there's such a, a ton of wonderful guest actors and, and so many new york theater actors uh actually and it's uh so it's a it's it was a pleasure to go to work and um and it was a really interesting challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know you worked with um, Doug Ritloff to learn. Yes. Well. Um, and I imagine you were just learning how to sign your lines, but there's also a lot of rewrites in TV. So 
did you have to learn new sign language at the last minute, so to speak? Well, sometimes they would change things and you would yeah. go, oh, don't do that. <laughs> don't. It took me long enough to learn the first version. And and very often they, they wrote things that it that it was hard to translate to American sign language and it, that really Doug, you know, had to reinterpret certain things. Um, so it was, yeah, and, and, you know, you just don't, you want, you don't want to embarrass yourself and, and uh, you, 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 you want to make it look as if you, you've been doing this for a while, but one of the, the helpful things was the character of Teddy Demas was someone who was ashamed that he had a deaf son and didn't learn American Sign Language for a long time. So he's not supposed to be so great at it and so facile. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, Doug was, uh, Ridloff was just tremendously helpful, obviously. And then and then James Caverly was incredibly supportive and of me speaking his language and 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 um, and and also helpful on set. And there was always a, an interpreter. Doug was always watching by video. And then there was a, an interpreter there. And so um, a, a lot of care was taken with that, with that, with those scenes. And um, uh, it's a yeah, it's 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 a beautiful language. And, you know, I started to because I had so many scenes with James, I, I did, I start, I try, I learned the alphabet, at least I learned it for a while. All of this stuff, by the way, is out of your brain now. <laughs> it's all gone out of my head now because I've uh, had to move on to other things in my life, but it, I'm sure uh, it'll come back. It's like riding a bike. So uh, <laughs> you really have to No, it's a, it's a beautiful language, but you it, like any language, it would take six months to a year to really become fluent in American Sign Language. And I, I only had about six weeks. So it was a little nerve wracking because once you're, especially if you're in an emotional scene and they, as you're, and you're, you're trying to sign and, and they also wanted with this very ambitious episode seven, yeah, they, the uh, they weren't, they weren't sure how silent it was going to be in the beginning that they might use, you know, some, some sound and they wanted you, they wanted you, so you're moving, you're saying the lines quietly and signing at the same time. And, and, uh, and it, 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 uh, invariably when, when, when it's a highly emotional scene, it's, it, it, it was, it's easy to get lost or forget the, the right sign or, and then also signing so that it can be seen on camera. And so it was a whole thing. Um, but that, that, that was a great episode. Like that, I mean, I would say that's the best episode of the first season, The Boy from 6B. And it's your, also your submission. Um, but one of the things I love about it, uh, besides the fact that it's completely silent and it delves into Teddy and Theo's relationship, it's the opening scene is really devastating because it's a flashback to young Theo and mm. Teddy plays soliloquy for him and it feels like he's like trying to will Theo to hear the song and then he eventually realizes what he's doing to him and it's really emotional and I think it could land the wrong way if done poorly so how did you approach that scene uh you know when I read that um and then I you know when I had said uh to John Hoffman well that's that's a big ask. You have to find a a child, a deaf child actor, you know, who can pull this off. And uh, it's and we uh, the day on the day of um, I, I didn't meet the, the little boy until the day of sh we, we were shooting and and, um, you know, and he was chosen because he sort of there was a resemblance to James and and I guess to, to, to me a little, um, and, um, it, yeah, it was, he, you know, he was, it, you know, he was so sweet and it was it, it's such a, uh, intense thing to do, um, trying to it, it really force him to will him to, to hear this music. And it's such a desperate, 
thing on Teddy's part and but also coming from a place of wanting to share this with his son and 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 in his own I, I think uh, unhappiness with the fact that he has a deaf son and wanting it him it, it's literally wanting him not to be deaf and and you know and it's an awful awful thing that he realizes what he's doing and finally stops but it's yeah it was a it was a very intense scene to do with a young a, a young child and and um mm -hmm. but because well, then the book end to that is the end of the episode when uh, after Zoe dies and Theo comes in and vomits and Teddy says whatever it is I can fix it it was like that moment so many years ago was when he decided he would protect him no matter what and then he later threatened yeah him. well it's certainly family family is everything to him mm -hmm. uh his own you know his his grandmother and and he, he obviously at least in one of the in the in an earlier episode, he talks about that he had you know he obviously had a terrible relationship with his father, um, and uh, so I think he's tr he try he's trying not to repeat that, um, although he's brought his son into this this uh, uh, <laughs> criminal <laughs> side side business of grave robbing and and um, <laughs> stealing jewelry and, um but uh you know he's i i think everything is about he does it for his family he's been very successful but uh well, but in a questionable way and um yeah i i you know that 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 uh, that last scene i mean he was james caverly i i you know that was the only the only disappointing thing about this whole experience was that um, uh, he was not nominated because I thought he was so, he gave such a beautiful performance. And so much of what I had to do was, is about that relationship and my work with him. So I, I like to think this is for the, this is a nomination for the both of us. Yeah. Um, Cause he was, uh, he was incredible and just, you know, he was so, I was just so impressed by his confidence and his, uh, you know, he had to do some uh, this very technical thing of he had a tube up his sleeve. He had to come in, um, vomit, and then have an emotional breakdown. And I watched him do it take after take, and each time it was uh, it was um, so emotionally full, and and he's so present, and he's a very gifted young actor, and I hope this will lead to uh, many other things for him and and a, a, just the sweetest young well, man. Well, you guys are both back in season two and um, you, uh, the, the two of them, they're under house arrest. So they're still in yes. California for Although now. They're awaiting trial. Yeah, yes. they're awaiting trial, but we've already seen uh, things, uh, the relationship not so good right now because they uh, had a fight. Uh, yeah. Again, uh, um, Teddy says, you know, I can fix whatever this is, but Theo reveals yeah. he has a new lawyer and walks out on him. Yeah. So what can you tease about how that relationship develops? Can they, will their relationship be repaired? Um, I can't say, <laughs> <laughs> but, but um, yes, uh, uh, you know, in, in the last, I think it was episode, well, was episode four. four. Yeah, that was four. Yeah, it's pretty, you know, he, he Theo basically wants nothing more to do with him. And and it's a that's a pretty devastating scene for Teddy, mm -hmm. and um, and then of course there's another development that perhaps <laughs> uh, Teddy might be Will's biological father. Is, that's right. <laughs> that that's right. So that uh, that certainly complicates uh, things with Oliver. Especially because he has also threatened Oliver, um, and he said that uh, he he's gonna fuck him. He doesn't know how or when, but he will. Well, he yeah. he actually fucked his ex-wife, <laughs> but um, but yes, he's uh, yeah yeah he's uh, he's uh, uh, wants revenge. You know, although this that whole thing is well you you just have to wait and see uh -huh. it it is resolved 
Okay. And, and or at least you see the beginnings of uh, it being resolved and uh, and and uh, and yeah, I think. Look, you know, I, I one would think maybe this was a wake up call for Teddy Demas. Um, the, whether he'll whether he'll have to go to prison or not, I don't know. He's you know, a, 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 but you know, he's caused his own son to be. Uh, now it's you know, is I is he he's all, it's not only just the the uh, stealing, <laughs> robbing the dead and stealing jewelry, but it's. I believe he isn't he also maybe up for the the death of Z Zoe. Well, yeah, um, uh, Theo is because he he Theo, yes. But, like you're well, he it was an, ac that, you're it like was an, an accidental thing. Manslaughter, yeah. And she, you know, he, yeah. But yes, so there's also that to deal with. There's a lot. There's, there's a lot on the table, and uh, I so I I would love to see. Um, an episode just in Dima's Deli. <laughs> <laughs> what are the magic ingredients he puts in those dips? Yeah, what what's in those dips? He's the king of dips. So what I mean, he could also just poison those dips to get back at Oliver, right? <laughs> well, I guess anything can happen at the Arconia. And certainly um that you know it's it's uh, it, they have to there there's there's gonna be more murders. Mm -hmm. The more this successful the show is, the more people will die. <laughs> Soon the only people left in the building will be Marty, Steve, and Selena. Uh, that'll um, be the final season, and then they have to murder each other. So. And then they have to move to another building. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with a, with a, hopefully a lower murder rate. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Um, well, I yeah, uh, sure, that'll be fun to explore uh, the <laughs> what goes on in in the kitchen at the Demas Delis. Um, yeah, uh, one one would dip? think that these are old family recipes. Oh, yeah. uh, I I would think. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite dip? Do I have a favorite dip? Yeah. I've I've never had any of the dips. Oh, Marty, wow. don't tell Marty, Oliver. <laughs> Marty Short is the one who has to oh, eat a lot of dips. I have no <laughs> idea where they get them. But obviously, there <laughs> it's such a funny premise that he only eats dips. Yeah. Um, but um, that that's what the Demas Deli episode will be for in season three. We'll we'll just find out what's in those dips. So yeah, what's in the dips? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, I'll suggest last, that. Yeah. But well, lastly, uh, obviously, Teddy was uh, produced many of Oliver's ill-conceived productions. Uh, right. Splash, most famously. Um, we also see the posters for A Doll's House and Everyone Can Whistle in the Rain. Um, and <laughs> Oliver has mentioned some other ones like McBeats, his Macbeth vanilla ice <laughs> hybrid. So is there an Oliver production that you, Nathan Lane, Tony winner, would consider starring in? No, no. <laughs> They're all horribly misconceived. It's just terrible. And Flash, he actually killed Chorus Boys. Yeah. Yeah, and they couldn't use water on stage for ten years. So yeah, um, what did he say the other day? He he did the Elephant Man with an actual elephant. <laughs> he, <laughs> I, I just um, like to assume that Teddy produced all of these and like he oh, never learned his lesson. No, he just kept saying no, yes and back. I think he them. no. I think Splash was uh, the, the straw one. that broke the camel's back. Um, but yes, he obviously had invested in several. And then there were, I believe there was a conversation where he talked Teddy out of investing in some very successful. Yeah, Les Mis, Hamilton, yeah, a, a lot of. <laughs> yes, there was. Yeah, things could have turned out a lot differently for Teddy Demas. Sure, he could have been, you yeah. know, a, a wildly successful producer if he hadn't hooked up with Oliver. <laughs> Obviously, their relationship goes way, way back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need a backstory episode on them again, season three. There we go. Maybe they met at Dima Stelly. Well, they you saw that they uh, he was part of that Son of Sam game. Yeah, when, back in the 70s. When, when they so. had that young, the young actor playing young Martin young Short, uh, who was really terrific. And there was a there was a Teddy, there was a Teddy character there. So obviously they've known each other from since the 70s. So they it's they go way, way back. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. That could also be season four. We can, we can spread these out before the final season when it's just three of them. <laughs> yeah. I don't, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we still don't know if Teddy might be in prison. He, he might it not be. take a long time, you know, so it's, it's fine. Yeah. And they have to move on to other stories. <laughs> You know, uh, it's lovely that this is all, you know, I was ha so I was very happy to just do I, I only, you know, I'm only in the, the one more episode. I was I was in L.A. doing a movie, so I couldn't do any more episodes. But um, it was it was, uh, you know, it's always uh, a pleasure to go to work there. For sure. Well, hopefully you'll be in more in season three. Uh, well, Nathan, it was great speaking with you. Congratulations again. Thank you. Fingers crossed Thanks. for Thanks so much. seven. Okay. okay.